Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, et bienvenue. I am Stephen Harris, and I will be your moderator. Before proceeding with the announcement, we would like to begin by showing you a brief two-minute video, which will play in each official language. We will then proceed with the ministerial announcement and a questions and answers period. I'll start with the video now, please. You're a Canadian Armed Forces veteran. Your mission is to get healthy, find work, go back to school, maybe retire. At Veterans Affairs Canada, our mission is to support you. Our research shows there are many aspects to your overall well-being. Financial security is one of them, and that means having the option of monthly payments for life. Pension for Life will give you that choice. Pension for Life's three new benefits will give you and your family the financial stability you need. The Pain and Suffering Compensation is a tax-free monthly payment that you get for life. You've earned this. It's for all the hurt you carry with you. Additional Pain and Suffering Compensation will kick in extra support if you've got a severe medical condition. It's non-taxable and you'll be able to get it in monthly payments for life. The monthly income replacement benefit makes things simpler by bringing six current benefits together into one. If you're in rehabilitation, the IRB will pay 90% of your military salary at release. If your condition will always make it tough for you to earn an income, this benefit will be there for life. And for some who have served less than 20 years, it will have an annual 1% increase to compensate for lost career progression. Three new benefits, plus a range of programs for all the other aspects of your well-being. Need money to go to school? Check out the new education and training benefit. Need a tax-free monthly payment for your family member who's been giving you essential care? The new caregiver recognition benefit covers it. What about more help for your spouse and children? You'll be able to use the services at all military family resource centers across Canada. Find out about all seven aspects of well-being and how our programs and benefits will help you and your family live fully and productively after service. A message from the Government of Canada. Vous êtes un vétéran des Forces armées canadiennes. Votre mission consiste à vous rétablir, à trouver un emploi, à retourner aux études et peut-être prendre votre retraite. À Ancien Combattant Canada, notre mission est de vous appuyer. Nos recherches montrent qu'il y a de nombreux aspects à votre bien-être général. L'un de ces aspects est la sécurité financière, ce qui signifie avoir l'option de recevoir des paiements mensuels à vie. La pension à vie vous offrira ce choix. Les trois nouvelles prestations de la pension à vie offriront la stabilité financière dont vous et votre famille avez besoin. L'indemnité pour douleur et souffrance est un paiement mensuel non imposable que vous recevez à vie. Vous le méritez, en reconnaissance de toute la douleur qui vous accable. L'indemnité supplémentaire pour douleur et souffrance apportera un soutien additionnel si vous souffrez d'une affection grave. Elle n'est pas imposable et vous pourrez la recevoir sous la forme de paiement mensuel versé à vie. La prestation de remplacement du revenu mensuel simplifie les choses en regroupant six prestations actuelles en une seule. Si vous êtes en réadaptation, la PRR versée correspondra à 90 de votre solde militaire à la libération. Si votre état de santé fait en sorte que vous aurez toujours de la difficulté à gagner votre vie, vous recevrez cette prestation à vie. Et pour certains de ceux qui ont servi moins de 20 ans, la prestation augmentera de 1 annuellement pour compenser la perte de possibilités d'avancement professionnel. Trois nouvelles prestations plus une gamme de programmes pour tous les autres aspects de votre bien-être. Besoin d'argent pour étudier? Découvrez la nouvelle prestation pour les études et la formation. Besoin d'un paiement mensuel non imposable pour le membre de votre famille qui vous fournit des soins essentiels? La nouvelle allocation de reconnaissance des aidants naturels est là pour ça. Besoin d'aide additionnelle pour votre époux et vos enfants? Vous pourrez utiliser les services offerts dans tous les centres de ressources pour les familles des militaires au Canada. Apprenez-en plus au sujet des sept aspects du bien-être et de la façon dont nos programmes et nos avantages vous aideront 
vous et votre famille, à mener une vie productive et bien remplie après le service militaire. Un message du gouvernement du Canada. We will now proceed with the ministerial announcement in a question and answers period. Media in the room and on the phone will be invited to participate. Please note that the event is also being shown on Facebook Live, and therefore we will pull questions from the online audience uh, to ask the representatives to answer as well. A brief reminder to please ensure that your cell phones are either turned off or on vibration mode. S'il vous plaît, vous assurez que votre téléphone cellulaire sont éteint ou en mode vibration. We're going to start now, and it gives me my pleasure to invite. Uh, J'invite maintenant le ministre d'Anciens Combattants et ministre associé de la Défense Nationale ainsi que le secrétaire parlementaire du ministre d'Anciens Combattants à prendre leur place sur la scène. Veterans Affairs Minister and Associate Minister of National Defense, Seamus O'Regan will deliver, first deliver remarks, followed by Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Veterans Affairs, Sherry Roman, Romanato. Thank you for joining me here today. Today, I am proud to announce our government's commitment to our veterans in their life after service. Before I get into the particulars, let me just briefly touch on how we got here today. In 2006, following calls from veterans for changes to the Pension Act, all parties in the House of Commons unanimously supported a move to a lump sum payment to, to be combined with other support programs. Then two years ago, when we formed government, we received a clear message from veterans. First, clarify and simplify the support that we provide. Second, improve service delivery, particularly in the area of wait times and help with the benefit process. We also heard that an option of a pension for life was a top priority. Since that time, we've committed over $6 billion to the services and benefits administered by Veterans Affairs. And I am proud to say that today we are further strengthening that commitment. Aujourd'hui, nous annonçons la pension de vie. L'option de pension de vie comporte trois piliers clés conçu pour travailler de concert afin d'assurer la reconnaissance, le soutien du revenu et la stabilité aux militaires et à leur famille durant leur transition de la vie militaire à la vie civile après une maladie ou une blessure. Today, we are announcing Pension for Life. The Pension for Life option has three pillars designed to work in concert to provide recognition, income support, and stability to members and their families as they transition to a life after service with an illness or injury. First, expanded non-taxable financial compensation to recognize pain and suffering caused by a service-related illness or injury. This means a maximum monthly amount of up to $2,650 for those most severely disabled veterans with barriers to reestablishment. Second, income replacement to help injured veterans make up for lost earnings at 90% of their pre-release salary. And third, a range of support programs to help veterans with other aspects of well-being, including education, employment, physical, and mental health. Si vous êtes blessé, vous allez recevoir l'indemnité pour souffrance et douleur. Cette indemnité ne peut être imposée. Si vous êtes blessé plus sérieusement, vous allez aussi recevoir l'indemnité supplémentaire pour souffrance et douleur. Cette indemnité aussi ne peut être imposée. If you are injured, you will receive a pain and suffering compensation. This is non-taxable. 
If you are more severely injured, you will receive the additional pain and suffering compensation, which is also non-taxable. The income replacement benefit will kick in if you are severely ill or injured and need rehabilitation before going back to work. If you are severely ill or injured and cannot return to work, you will receive all of the above as well as a 1% per year for career progression. So let me give you an example of what this means. An eligible veteran that is 100% disabled and 25 years old will receive almost $1,500 more a month than they would have in 2015. For a 50-year-old, that increases to $1,750 a month in additional benefits. This is a real change to the support that they receive. Our department met with military and veterans groups and the message we heard was quite clear. We need to allow the individual who is living with a service-related illness or injury to determine the form of compensation that works best for them and their families. It's a pretty obvious change and one that I wholeheartedly agree with. Each member who serves is different. And each client of Veterans Affairs deserves to be met on their own ground and to have a voice in how they receive their benefits. Between now and the projected start date of April 1st, 2019, we're going to make sure that each veteran and their family is fully briefed on this new program. But I think it's important to take some time now to highlight a few of the key changes. First, all of those covered under the new Veterans Charter will be automatically assessed against the new Pension for Life program. And no individual will be subject to a net de decrease in overall benefits. Second, survivor benefits will be increased from 50% to 70% to ensure that families continue to be well supported even after the loss of their loved one. Third, we are giving veterans the option of choosing between a lump sum or a monthly payment. And we're going to pay for independent financial advice to help them make that decision. And fourth, and I want to be very clear on this, we've done a lot to simplify supports and benefits available to veterans who've had a service-related illness or injury. But that doesn't mean that the system isn't complex. It would be foolish of me to stand up here and pretend that I could give you a comprehensive briefing on this subject in six minutes. So we're undertaking a focused campaign to educate both clients of Veterans Affairs and serving members of the Canadian Armed Forces so that everyone will have the information that they need to make the best decisions for their well-being. In the lead up to this announcement, my department spent quite a bit of time speaking with people receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs and members of the Canadian Armed Forces with varying years of service. One veteran who has about 20 years of service said this, be direct, be matter of fact, don't oversell, don't undersell. That's advice I've taken to heart. Aujourd'hui, je suis fier de n'en sait que nous avons élargi considérablement les avantages disponibles aux individus avec une maladie ou blessure liée à leur service. Today, I am proud to announce that we have, we have significantly expanded the benefits that are available to individuals with a service-related illness or injury. They'll have more choice in how they receive their benefits and we'll have an expanded set of options to help them in their transition to life after service. It's not going to please everyone, but it delivers on our promise to clarify and simplify the three pillars of support provided to veterans. This isn't some mission accomplished moment. This in many ways is just the beginning. Our job from this moment on will be informing veterans about these new benefits, 
inspiring renewed faith in our ability to support their well-being and improving the effectiveness and efficiency of this organization to deliver to those whom we serve. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Minister. J'invite maintenant le secrétaire parlementaire à prendre la parole. Good morning. First, I'd like to recognize that this is a difficult time of the year for many military family members, many, many military members and veterans. And I know that many of you have been waiting very patiently for today's announcement. Je reconnais d'emblée qu'il s'agit d'une période de l'année qui est difficile pour beaucoup de militaires, vétérans et leurs familles. Et je sais que vous êtes nombreux à attendre depuis longtemps l'annonce d'aujourd'hui. La plupart d'entre nous n'ont pas la moindre idée de ce qui peut représenter l'adaptation à la vie après le service. Cette annonce est le fruit de recherches et de consultations exhaustives avec des militaires, la communauté des vétérans, des familles, des intervenants et des experts. On entend souvent dire que tous les militaires ont une expérience unique de l'enrôlement jusqu'à la libération. Puis je sais que c'est le cas dans ma propre famille et que c'est aussi le cas pour les nombreux militaires et vétérans avec qui j'ai eu l'occasion de discuter. Nous savions que nous devions trouver une solution procurant suffisamment de flexibilité pour assurer le bien-être de tous les vétérans, une solution qui permettrait à ceux et celles qui ont le plus, plus besoin d'obtenir le soutien nécessaire. Dans le foulis d'un investissement de plus de 6 milliards de dollars sous forme de nouveaux avantages qui ont été présentés dans le budget 2016 et le budget 2017, nous annonçons aujourd'hui un investissement additionnel de 4,5 milliards de dollars pour la création d'ensemble de programmes et de prestations de pension pouvant être adaptées afin de répondre aux besoins individuels des vétérans et de leurs familles. Ils auront maintenant accès aux avantages suivants. Une indemnisation financière reconnaissant la douleur et la souffrance causée par une invalidité liée au service. Une prestation de remplacement du revenu pour aider à compenser la perte de revenu. Des programmes de soutien pour aider les vétérans dans les domaines comme l'éducation, l'emploi et la santé physique et mentale. From the new lifetime tax-free monthly pain and suffering compensation and the additional pain and suffering compensation to the monthly income replacement benefit for those struggling with transition due to health problems resulting from service. This new flexible package is designed to enable ill and injured veterans and their families to choose what works best for them. Nous sommes déterminés à assurer le bien-être des vétérans et de leurs familles. Cette nouvelle option de pension à vie procurera la reconnaissance, la sécurité financière et la stabilité nécessaire pour favoriser le bien-être. Having worked on the Veteran Affairs file for almost two years, I visited 12 bases and wings since March, and I've spoken to hundreds of military members, veterans, and their families. And I just want to say thank you for your frank, open, and honest conversations. Our brave men and women in uniform, those who have served, and the families that support them, deserve the recognition of all Canadians. And I hope today's announcement will help those who have given their all. Merci. Thank you. Merci, Madame Romanado. Nous passerons maintenant à la période de questions. Elle sera ouverte aux représentants des médias présents dans la salle ainsi qu'au téléphone et nous prendra aussi des questions de notre audience de Facebook Live. Je vais commencer ici dans la salle, à gauche. Bonjour, Michel Lamarche, TVA. Je vais poser ma question en français, peut-être en anglais si, euh, si nécessaire. Euh, Madame Romanado, on, on apprend ce matin que, dans le fond, au niveau des montants, il n'y aura pas beaucoup de différence pour les anciens combattants. Peut-être que certains vont voir ça ce matin en se disant « on ne fait que complexifier un système qui est déjà très compliqué. Qu'est-ce que vous leur dites? Euh, actuellement, c'est contraire. Euh, on a simplifié le, le système. Puis, comme le ministre a mentionné, on va augmenter le nombre euh, selon le cas. 
de la personne, de l'ancien combattant, ils vont gagner plus par mois dans leur poche. Donc, c'est contraire. Did you understand the question? Uh, I did you want to, English, just want to know, what do you say to veterans who think you just complexify a system this morning and they won't get really that much more money? Oh, I would say we will be doing a great deal more to simplify the system. I mean, we're taking six programs and making them into one income replacement benefit. And before, from their point of view, that meant that sometimes they had to go through six different applications, six different hoops to jump through in order to receive the same total amount that we will offer them now by going through this once. So we've listened to veterans. They want it simplified. We want to make sure that it is more simple for them. And I can tell you, I mean, when you have to go through complicated structures like that, it, it, it can drive an incredible amount of anxiety. We want to lessen anxiety. We want to make this as simple as we possibly can. It is not always easy because the background of this is it is a complex system. But from the veteran's point of view and through this whole process, and as we've developed this pension for life option, I have attempted to do my level best, as has our department, to keep the point of view of the veteran first and foremost. How much will they receive at the end of every month? That's been, I mean, not dealing with larger numbers. I wanted to know at the end of the day what they will receive every month. And when it comes to processes, how simple can we make it? We can make it this simple. Make it more simple. That's what drove us, the point of view of the veteran. Thank you. We'll have to move to another question here. Je voulais savoir qu'est-ce que vous dites ce matin à ceux euh, qui vont considérer que les montants que vous annoncez sont toujours insuffisants. En français, s'il vous plaît. Les montants que vous annoncez ce matin demeurent insuffisants. Il n'y a pas une très grosse différence avec les montants qu'ils ont actuellement, qu'ils critiquent déjà. Ça dépend le cas de, de l'ancien combattant, le nombre de, des années en service. Donc, c'est vraiment cas par cas. Puis, comme le ministre a mentionné, on va augmenter le, le, le support pour ceux et celles qui ont le plus à besoin. Donc, on va augmenter, comparable dans 2015, le montant selon le cas de l'ancien combattant spécifiquement. And I'd like to answer that in English. Um, if you are a 25-year-old veteran who is 100% disabled, under this plan, you will receive 3.758 million over the course of your lifetime. Under the 1919 Pension Act, that amount is 3.624 million. Our plan gives you more than the Pension Act would have for a 25-year-old veteran who is 100% disabled. For a 50-year-old veteran, 100% disabled, under our plan, you will receive over your lifetime $3.10 million. Under the 1919 Pension Act, you would receive $2.29 million. That's close to a million dollars difference. It's a lot of money to me, and I think it's a lot of money to people who will receive it. Oui, bonjour, Philippe-Vincent Foisy de Radio-Canada. Euh, ma première question en anglais, en français, là. Euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez garantir qu'il n'y a aucun vétéran qui va toucher moins d'argent? Can you guarantee that no veteran will have less money in their pockets with this program? We were focused in this program on those who are catastrophically in injured, those who have received a disability or an illness during their service, those who have a hard time going back to work. Those who have a hard time, as they say in the language, reestablishing themselves. Uh, getting back to work, having purposeful work, is one of the greatest ways that you can achieve mental and physical health. So that's who we were focused on. Um, making sure that also veterans were properly compensated for that, that they would have financial stability, but that if they decided to return to work, they wouldn't be penalized for doing so. So it's important to mention, too, that $20,000 of the IRB is protected from clawback. So if they do decide to go back for modest work, they will not be penalized. That's something that veterans told us, and it's something that we listened to. Donc, euh, je ne sais pas si vous voulez une, une répétition en français. Oui, la question est en français. J'aimerais savoir une réponse en français. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous garantir? Il n'y a aucun vétéran qui va toucher moins d'argent sous ce programme-là. 
Donc, comme le ministre a mentionné, le, nous avons focusé sur les anciens combattants qui étaient le, le plus blessés, dans le plus besoin. Puis, on a mentionné aussi que euh, les anciens combattants vont recevoir les indemnités selon leur niveau de, euh, de invalidité, mais aussi que si l'ancien le, le, combattant veut retourner au travail, un temps, travail temps partiel, on ne va pas toucher le premier 20 000 de leur revenu. Maybe my question wasn't clear. I'm looking for a guarantee from your part that veterans won't have less money in their pockets from this program. Can you guarantee this? Est-ce que vous pouvez nous le garantir en anglais en français? In English? Anybody? Oh. You ready? Anybody who is receiving compensation under the new Veterans Charter, I guarantee you, will not be receiving less under this program. En français? En français? Donc, les anciens compétents qui reçoivent présentement les bénéfices selon la nouvelle charte pour les anciens compétents ne vont pas recevoir moins d'argent par mois. Merci. Je vais passer à une autre question ici dans la salle. Une autre question ici. Murray Brewster with CBC News. Minister, respecting the fact that the figures you threw out there earlier, veterans, the bottom line for the average veteran is that they are going to receive parity with the old Pension Act. Now, the numbers that you were quoting there earlier were for the maximum. They reflect only currently, according to your officials, 12% of veterans who are receiving the maximum amount right now. Can you guarantee that the average veteran will be receiving the same or more when compared with the old Pension Act? No. No, I cannot guarantee that. Each will be individually assessed. What I can guarantee is that any veteran who is currently receiving funding or, or help, rehabilitation, whatever, under the new Veterans Charter, any veteran receiving any veteran receiving funding under the new Veterans Charter will not be receiving less under this. In almost every circumstance, they'll be receiving more. But compared to the Pension Act of 1919, no, that won't always be the case. We were focused on those who were having the most difficulty getting back to work. We were focused on those who were the most catastrophically injured or with illness. And under those circumstances, they will always receive more than the Pension Act of 1919. Because, Minister, that is a salient point, because it is at the heart of the class action lawsuit that was before the courts. Uh, it was also at the heart of the political issue that dogged the previous government in terms of lump sum versus pensions for life. So can you say now that your government has actually diffused this political issue? Oh, I can't say that we've diffused a political issue, Murray. This is the first press conference. We'll see how this goes, and I understand it's on Facebook Live, so we'll see how this goes. I will say this, because it's very important. Um, you know, at the heart of the Equitas lawsuit was the notion that there would be two, there was a classification of two different veterans. We wanted to avoid that with this. I was determined to, so was the department. So this funding is retroactive. That's very, very important. If you have received a lump sum payment under the new Veterans Charter, we will calculate, we will go back and calculate how much you would have received at the point that you received that lump sum payment. What would you have received then if this was brought in now? And we will apply that all the way back and then deduct the lump sum payment that you've received. And the difference of that, that difference, will be applied monthly for the rest of your life. It's also important to mention, too, because I think that the survivor's benefits here is very important. And for those of us who went door to door and met with a lot of veterans' widows, because we're generally talking about women here, they will see an increase of 50 to 70 percent of the survivor's benefits. And if, if their spouse dies before they receive all the amount of money that, that, they are, that they should have received, that I just described, then the difference, that lump sum difference, will be applied to them. So they won't lose out because their spouse died before they received the full amount that they were owed. Minister, thank you. You've already actually just answered a question. We're getting on Facebook Live, but I will ask you another one that's coming in through Facebook Live. Will we have to be reassessed every two years for this Pension for Life benefit? No, you will not have to be reassessed every two years. Take in one fact, as I understand it, just to be clear, everybody will be automatically reassessed for people who are under the new Veterans Charter. Take one more in the room before trying the phone. Yeah, hi, Julie Van Dusen, CBC. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to be clear on the 
changes that were made in 2006 and governments have been criticized ever since. So can you just tell me clearly, will people be getting as much as they got in 2006? Yes, and more in many circumstances. Yes. So, uh, you know, a lump sum payment, uh, which we increased from, I think, $315,000 to $360,000 maximum. I mean, there's been a notion out there over the past number of weeks and perhaps even before that we were just going to take the lump sum and apply it uh, over every month. And I think that what we have shown here is that was not the case. In fact, it was never the case. Um, we, wanted, we, we, want to, we, we very much want people to take up the monthly option. We wanted to make it, um, you know, I hate to say the word lucrative, but we wanted to make it lucrative, lucrative enough that, that people would want to. Uh, that even if you're 25 years old and you have perhaps, a, you know, you're assessed at a 25% disability, that, you know, if over the course of your lifetime, I mean, you, you, could, take, you could take a lump sum amount now, uh, you know, at perhaps, I'm just looking down at my notes here, but, you know, at perhaps something like uh, $70,000, but it might be worth $172,000 to you if you took it, you know, every month. Uh, what we heard from veterans was the idea behind the new Veterans Charter was to stop this uh, giving out checks and hoping for the best. And the idea was that you give a lump sum payment and you involve veterans in a whole host of rehabilitative services and well-being services. And the rehabilitative and well-being services have worked out very well. Um, you know, veterans have responded quite favorably to that. And when I speak to veterans, they talk about those services and what a difference it made to their family. And in 2017, by the way, it sounds very obvious that we would be doing that. But under the, under the Pension Act of 1919, which applied up until that point, we didn't. We wrote a check. The irony is, with the lump sum payment, is it became not just uh, veterans didn't just feel this way, but Canadians did. They felt that a lump sum payment people were being written off. Veterans were just being kind of taken off the ledger, and forgotten about, which was the, as I understood it, the opposite of the intention of the new Veterans Charter. Again, which all parties in the House of Commons unanimously agreed to. The Veterans Charter was meant to be a living treaty, uh, evergreen, as they say in the bureaucracy. It was meant, the new Veterans Charter was meant to grow. And it hasn't grown over the past 10 years until we got into government. It, it, it remains stagnant. So this is a, I think, healthy adaptation. We are offering the option of a monthly payment. We want veterans to take the monthly payment. And one of the reasons, for, one of the most important reasons for that is it allows us in a monthly, on a monthly time period to engage with that veteran, to check in with them. How are you doing? Have things changed? What can we offer you now? And for some veterans, regardless of age, they may just decide that the lump sum is best for them. Those later in life may say, I'm just happy with the lump sum, thanks very much. I'm 25% injured, I'm 55 years old, and you know, I've got some hearing loss, and I'm, I'm happy with the lump sum. That makes sense for me right now at this point in my life. Um, and, and that's fine. So the option does lie with them. But we really wanted, when we developed this, to encourage veterans to take that monthly option. Um, you, you say this is easier. I, I, can't, I can't even imagine how complicated this is. Yeah. So maybe your average veteran can spend the next 18 months. I gather what, that's what the time is for, so they can figure out what applies to them. But what I'm trying to sort out is why you've had two years to work on it. Why are you doing this now as the House isn't sitting? Just everyone's left town. Why are you doing this now? Uh, I look at the faces of my officials um, because I think we... we, we we pushed this. Uh, we wanted to make the most of this program. We pushed it as far as we could. Um, at the end of the day, through a lot of hard work through the officials of Veterans Affairs Canada and my team, um, I felt that this was a, a good and fair option for our veterans. And I needed to be able to stand here and say that. Uh, we will not make everybody happy with this. Um, the veterans community is disparate and divided. Some will not like it. Some will like it a lot. And most will probably be in between. And it is, it is complex, Julie, unfortunately. This is a complex system. Um, some are better at navigating it than others. Some are extremely good at navigating it. Uh, others ne do need help. And their families need help. And the onus is on us to make sure that we help them through that. Um, we are going to begin that process immediately. And uh, legislatively, the earliest we can bring this in would be safely is April 1st, 2019. 
Uh, those of us who are new members of parliament are realizing that government does only move so fast, even if you are extraordinarily impatient like myself, uh, and impatient like I know a lot of veterans are and should be. Um, but we think that by, uh, by that date, not only legislatively does it work for the calendar, it gives us time to make sure that the kinks are ironed out so that when we start, we start now. But also, the information that we're providing today, we also understand, is very important to veterans. And I apologize for the last number of weeks for leaks that were beyond my control with numbers that were thrown out there in the public domain that caused a lot of veterans consternation at this time of year. I am deeply, deeply sorry for that. Unfortunately, it, it is beyond my control. But I can tell you my team and my team at Veterans Affairs Canada kept those numbers very close because when we came out here, we didn't want any speculation. We didn't want any anxiety. And I did and was determined to get this out to them as quickly as possible. But for all that speculation, I apologize. Now we have a, paction, a, a, a package, a, passion for, a pension for life option that we can now go over, discuss, and, uh, and I hope that, firstly, I hope that veterans are, some are pleased with this option. I hope they believe that we fought hard for them, um, that, uh, that this is a package that uh, provides them with that option that they need and deserve. And I hope that Canadians, when they read it uh, and look at it, feel, uh, at least you know, a good portion of them feel that we are doing right by veterans. Nous allons vérifier s'il y a une question par téléphone pour les journalistes. Is there a question on Thank the phone? Thank you. Merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. Vous pouvez sur étoile un maintenant pour poser une question. It will be brief pause while you register for your questions. Il y aura un court délai vous permettant de vous enregistrer dans la file d'attente pour la période de questions. Thank you for your patience. Merci de patienter. There are no questions registered at this time. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will go to my side here. Mr. Lieberthume, Canadian Press. I was hoping you could uh, speak directly to those veterans who, um, when the Prime Minister said in, in August 2015 that uh, the government or the Liberals would reinstate the old pensions, that they believed it would be the old pensions. Um, what, would you, what will you say to those, especially those who, under this new plan, will only see a minimal, a modest increase, if you will, if any, um, and, and who feel that you've betrayed their trust? I would say to those veterans who, uh, who have an attributable um, uh, uh, illness or injury that they received while serving this country, who have a tough time getting back to work, those who are suffering with PTSD, we will look after you. Financially, we will provide you with a benefit that is stable, that will give you that sense of financial stability that when you do decide to go back to work, we will be there for you, that we will not claw back your earnings up to $20,000, and that if you fall injured again, and this happens with PTSD particularly, if suddenly it comes back, we got your back, you can come back to us, we have an income replacement benefit that will look after you, and through all of this, we will have the benefits of well-being, rehabilitative services that did not exist under the 1919 Pension Act, that was not there for veterans under the 1919 Pension Act. Those who need us the most will be there for you. Do you know when that promise was made? Uh, I realize uh, you, know, you weren't minister at the time. Do you have any idea whether the intention at that time was ever to bring back the old pensions? Was that ever part of the discussion, uh, even leading up to today? I know that right now that what we are proposing is something I feel uh, answers the concerns that many veterans have voiced to me in my short time as Veterans Affairs Minister and uh, to my predecessor, Minister Hare. They wanted flexibility. They want financial stability. And I feel that we've delivered on both of those things. People want, veterans want, an, and their families want an element of control over their lives. And they want to know that they can, they can come back, reestablish themselves into society, but then when something happens, they can go back and we'll be there for them. And I feel confident standing here and offering that today. Minister, I'm going to take another question from our Facebook Live feed. You're already experiencing a huge backlog of assessments for pension, but you're now saying that everybody will be automatically reassessed. How are you going to manage that huge sudden increase? We've been preparing for this for uh, weeks, if not months. 
Um, those who are providing services at Veterans Affairs Canada are, have been briefed uh, almost fully, um, and now fully as of today, uh, on, on the benefits uh, exactly that will be offered to those families. So we are ready to inform them, to inform their families of what's available to them. We do have challenges, there's no question about it on backlog. Uh, I can say honestly that you know myself, Sherry, our government, and the officials who work at Veterans Affairs Canada are not happy about that. Um, one of the reasons for that is because we have given veterans, given those people who call the benefit of the doubt in many circumstances, so that if you have PTSD, let's say, and you served, we're no longer going to go through the exercise of attempting to prove that you actually got the PSD through, through service. We're just going to say, yeah, you got it through service. So that has sped it up for some people. Word has gotten out in social media about that, and it has substantially increased demand. Um, you know, it, it, in a way, it's a good problem to have. It's still a substantial problem. And I say that because uh, I think some veterans realize that we are being more responsive and that we are attempting to develop a, a sp systems that are faster so that they're going to call more, they're going to get in touch with us more. And that increases the demand. And then we get back to, you know, the, the lineups that we see that, frankly, none of, none of us are happy with. Um, and, and we want and we must do better. Thank you. We'll be able to take about two more questions. I'll take them in the room here. Minister, um, good morning. You touched on the, on the legislative challenges. Your officials touched on the staffing challenges with the announcement today. Uh, but for Promise, that really goes back to the last campaign in 2015. Do, do you think it's fair now to ask veterans to, to say, look, you have to wait 14 more months for these benefits to kick in? Do you think, do you think that's, that's fair to ask them? No, I don't think it's fair to ask veterans to wait any more time than they have to, to be honest with you. The only thing that I can do is, is look at them in the eye, as I will over the next 18 months or so, as I go out across the country and, and talk about this. All I can do is look them in the eye and say that we are doing our level best. And, and uh, I can't say anything more than that. No, it's not fair. I'd like to have you know, all the services and, f and money uh, and, and, and benefits that, they, that they've earned. I, I want them to have it today. Thank you. Question again here in the room. Super. Uh, Sean Brouillet, uh, columnist. Um, Minister, when I was the, f uh, I assembled with a small group of Canadians back in uh, 2005, and, and we were the first to oppose this lump sum program. Um, you know, the point being was that we wanted to, you know, given a veteran of a similar situation, similar injury, we wanted to see all veterans have access to the same benefits. Now, prior to your arrival, we received the technical briefing, and they indicated that a veteran under the new program would receive more than under the old Pension Act program. Um, and I'm just wondering if this program that's being presented today is so much superior to the old Pension Act program, why are the old Pension Act recipients, or I shouldn't say old, but why are the Pension Act recipients not being allowed access to this new program? If it's better, why aren't we allowing all veterans to do it? And, and if it's not better, why are we not providing some of the previous Pension Act bonuses to the current veterans? Sean, um, I know from a number of veterans who receive uh, benefits under the old program, uh, some are satisfied with that program, some are not. Um, you know, I, I, I can't... Uh, I can't answer to the new Veterans Charter when it was created and the decisions that were made. Um, I just know that those who currently fall under the new Veterans Charter who were not happy with a lump sum payment, who may have received that lump sum payment, that we will look after them under the new program. Um, and that those who uh, may become ill or injured and have not applied for these benefits, they will now automatically, you know, as of April 1, 2019, fall under the new regime. Okay, super quick follow-up. Uh, so Bill C-42 sitting in, uh, in limbo right now. Um, it's supposed to be implemented April 1st, 2018. Um, so really, it really hasn't gone through the parliamentary process at first reading right now. Uh, why can't legislation for this be tabled and that both of those bills go through the same time, the same process, because you can, Bill C-42 is going to be rammed through in three months. Why can't we do the same with this? Uh, not to be... Uh not to be glib, I'd have to talk to the government house leader about that, uh, particularly about the former. Um, about the latter, we do need the time to make sure that we get the systems in place as well from our end, from a technical point of view. So it's not just about legislative process. It's also making sure that we have everything ready to make sure there are no hiccups when we introduce a new system, particularly when it comes to our veterans and their families. I want to make sure that everything is ironed out, every T is crossed, every I is dotted, and there are no glitches. 
Je peux prendre Thank you. une dernière question ici dans la salle. Bonjour, Mathieu Goyer de Radio-Canada. Euh, question sur le, le soin aux vétérans. La question de la marijuana médicale a été est un sujet chaud d'actualité pour, pour eux. On aimerait savoir si le ministère des anciens combattants en détention devrait prendre des vérifications plus précises sur les prescriptions fournies aux vétérans dans les cas de cannabis thérapeutique et si des, euh, des balises plus strictes sont envisagées. Um, Do you want one today? Yeah, perhaps, General, yeah. if you'd like, to, that's a very technical question. So, I don't know if you have any Deputy Minister, come over. Come over uh, here, sir. Or, no, come over here where the mic is. Yes. Yeah. Oui, question. Oui, je comprends la question est plus technique, là, mais si euh, le ministère avait l'intention de prendre des vérifications plus strictes sur les prescriptions de cannabis médical euh, fournies aux vétérans. En, encore les. Euh, la décision euh, pour, euh, pour un script pour le marijuana, c'est entre euh, le médecin et euh, l'ancien combattant. C'est la relation entre les deux. Euh, et encore, c'est tous les médecins dans chaque province. C'est leur euh, droit, c'est euh, leur, euh, comment on dit, jurisdiction. Euh, avec notre ministère, avec euh, le gouvernement, euh, notre responsabilité, c'est vraiment de récompense, euh, le réembursement pour les coûts euh, pour euh, le marijuana. Euh, encore avec le nouveau politique que nous avons commencé il y a un, euh, vraiment un an, euh, c'est que le, le maximum, euh, c'était 3 euh, grammes. Mais avec la flexibilité, avec, euh, avec le conseil d'un spécialiste comme un psychiatriste, euh, plus que trois, mais encore entre le spécialiste et le médecin et l'ancien combattant. Merci. Vous êtes, vous êtes qui, votre, votre nom, votre titre? Oh. Il est le sous-ministre pour l'ancien combattant, General Walter Nitinchuk. Comment on appelle son nom? On va passer pour euh, clarifier pour vous. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's announcement. Thank you for attending. Thank Mesdames you. et messieurs, ceci conclut cette annonce. Merci d'avoir assisté à notre événement.